Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we're going to be talking about Blender 4.5, which is now available in beta, and this release is, what's the word for it? It is a big friggin' deal. So if you want to go ahead and grab it, what you do, head on over to the Blender site, blender.org, hit the download link, scroll on down, find the Go Experimental, click the download Blender Experimental, and you should find it for your platform of choice. If you switch over to Architectures, you should be able to pick what is appropriate to your version. There are Mac OS versions, and there are Linux versions. Now, the interesting one is going to be this one here. So part of the big friggin' deal is this. So see how there is an Intel version? Well, let's go to the latest release notes here for Blender 4.5. And you'll notice down here, Intel Mac support is being deprecated. So due to high maintenance costs of tracking down and fixing graphics related uh, issues specific to Intel and AMD GPUs, uh, it was decided this will be the last release with official Intel Mac OS build of Blender. So this is it. If you are using an Intel Mac, uh, this is the last release you are going to get. At the same time on the last release versions, this is also going to be the last release version that supports Collada. Well, that'd be DAE files. Um, it's kind of a dying format in terms of support. So I understand why they're pulling this one out. It's been deprecated since 4.2. So this is the version where they are going to the last release of it. With the version 5, it will be officially gone. So that is something to be aware of in terms of this release. So why is this release such a big friggin' deal? Well, let me just go ahead and show it to you. So this is Blender 4.5. The first thing you're going to want to do is come on in here. Go to Edit. Go to Preferences. Go to System, like this. And you will notice this right here. So the back end now, the graphics rendering back end is now Vulkan. Yes, so you have Vulkan support and it should be quite a bit faster. And in my case, uh, it actually is quite a bit faster. On a uh, 4090 mobile GPU, I am noticing some pretty substantial performance improvements. I've also crashed twice. So it's one of those things you want to be aware of. It definitely makes things faster, but it is also new. So it could crash. Uh, it's also not going to be turned on by default. So you're going to want to come in here and enable it if you want to check it out. It also does not work well with uh, VR and WA support. I don't actually even know what that means, but that's one of those things you're going to want to be aware of that is lacking here. So that is the big thing. A lot of people have been waiting for Vulkan for a very long time. And the good news is Vulkan is finally here, which is awesome. Now, another piece of this is a little change that I absolutely love. And you're going to notice it right here. Isn't that exciting? <laughs> So what I'm doing right now is I have a Logitech uh, MX Master like everybody else does. And you know that little scroll wheel on the left-hand side? It works now. So you can scroll the viewport this way, uh, just like you could do the up and down one to zoom in and out. Left will pan left and right, which is really cool. But on top of that, so let's go down here to the timeline and let's uh, zoom it in. So with the timeline highlighted, what you'll see is it does left and right scrolling. That's also the case over here. So if you've got this done over like this, and then you've got to scroll it for some reason, it handles scrolling as well. So if you have uh, a mouse with two scroll wheels, they are now supported in Blender. And this is actually one of those little usability things that I think is going to make a gigantic friggin' deal. Like it's just one of those major difference makers. Now, another major difference maker we have here is this. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna create another mesh. So right here, and we'll go ahead and create a monkey mesh as well. And let's just move it over a little bit, all right? So now I've got these two selected. I'm gonna go over here. And this is one of those things I've wanted pretty much forever. I'm in the UV editor, look at that. Isn't that freaking cool? You may wonder, okay, what the heck is going on here? Well, I am showing my UVs for my objects here. Uh, first off, I'm showing multiple selected. So I got one selected, two selected, both selected, and you're seeing both of them there. By the way, the priority of the rendering is done based off the order that you click them in. So the one that's got the most display is being shown here. Now, you may be wondering, okay, what the hell is so special here? Well, let me go back here and show you on Blender 4.5. So here we have one object. I'm going to go ahead and add another object in here, again, a monkey, and drag it over like so. Now, let's go back over here and split this window out like so, and then we'll come back down here to the UV editor. Uh, one selected, nothing, literally nothing showing up. So I come up over here and I have to go to edit mode in order to see the UVs. Now it'll show them in object mode if you wish. And on top of that, multiple select. So because you have to be in edit mode, you can't multi-select objects like what I'm showing here. This is just not possible in Blender 4.4. Whereas here, now multiple selections show the UVs over here. Now this is configurable. You can actually come up here. Uh, you've got control over the opacity of the faces as they are displayed. Uh, and you can also just turn this functionality off if you wish. But again, no need to be in edit mode to see the UVs anymore. 
oh, this is just one of those little things that I've always found a little irritating, so I'm happy to see this is here. Now, another major thing that we've got going on is, I don't know about you, but I, I don't use half of this crap, like ever in my life. Like I almost never use constraints, for example, in what I do. I never use the physics for the most part. So there's a bunch of stuff here that I potentially don't use. Well, now when you are in the properties window, there's a little drop down over here that is now available. And what you'll see here is if you don't use physics, turn it off. Constraints, turn it off. Data, bones, whatever. You can toggle off all the things you don't want to see. Again, a very small change, but it's one of those things I really love to see in this release. All right, so let's move on. Next up, we have Another little change. Uh, this one is kind of more niche. It's one of those things that you would use if you use a lot of like third party objects and you maybe don't like the texturing that they've done there. You can now actually come in here with the object selected. So select the object, go in here, uh, and then you can come down and go to, where are you? Uh, clean up, remove all materials. So if it's got a bunch of materials applied to it, you can actually get rid of them all at once. Previously, it used to just be the other option that was there. So clean up, it used to only have the remove unused material slots. You can now like wipe out all the materials on an object if you wish, which is very cool. We also have a change over here. If I go over to the asset browser, like so, this has been getting a lot of love over the last couple releases. So you now have this control over here. So this didn't exist. So we go back over here and we switch this to the asset browser. So this is 4.4 we're looking at right now. And why can't I figure out where it is? There it is. Uh, this option, see, you've only got size and sort by. Over here, you now have uh, size, sort by, but also the ability to switch out like this and controls over it. So you've got different viewing options here for the asset browser. It also cleaned up the way that they are ultimately rendered and displayed, uh, which is a nice improvement as well. Now we got another one that this one might be a little bit on the niche side, but it is very cool. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna delete these two objects over here. And I'm gonna switch this from the, uh, the outliner view to the file browser view. And let's go over here into the downloads. By the way, this is one of those areas where look, that uh, option to scroll would come in very, very handy. I said, what I'm gonna do is come up over here. So what you could do now is I could select an object over here and I could say select an object over here and drag them into my scene. And then boom, so what it just did is instantiated those two dragged in objects. You may be thinking, so what? That's not special. Well, let's go back and show you the behavior from Blender 4.4. So again, here, let's go in and grab those two objects. So we got a box and control click. We got a monkey, drag them in, same deal, import one object. So now you can drag and instantiate multiple objects from the file viewport, which is actually really cool. And that actually applies in a couple of ways. And this segues nice into our next section over here. So what I'm going to do is let's just expand this window way up. And now we're gonna switch over to the node editor uh, because there have been quite a few changes in the geometry node editor and multiple node editors, to be honest. But here, we'll show you with the geometry node editor first. First off, check this one out. So I can take those two objects and boom, drop them in. So you can do multiple drop-ins to node editors as well. But you'll also notice something else that just happened here. What the heck are import object nodes? Well, these are brand new object nodes. There's brand new nodes here. Uh, we've actually got a bunch of them. So you'll see here uh, import, uh, what are they actually called? I believe they're add uh, import right here. You're gonna notice you now have CSV, Wavefront, PLY, STL, and TXT, and VDB that you can bring them in. Again, multiple drag and drop supported, but you do have these new node types. Another cool thing that they've done with geometry nodes is let me take this and hook this up to a file path. That's not good. And it clearly tells you. So if you hook up nodes in a way that don't make any sense, it will now mark it accordingly, which is a nice little improvement. Another major improvement they did is framing. So what I can actually do is I can select these two nodes right now and hit F and then boom, I frame them. And as I my framed nodes. So, so we can drag them up there. And then what I can actually do is I can have something come outside of the frame, like so. So let's just make this whatever, right? So now that goes outside of the frame. I can actually drag that in and drop it into the frame node, like so. And then you see as I'm moving it around, it's actually resizing the frame, which is very cool. But I can also hold down the F key. Oops, I did not mean to do that. Let me undo that. I can grab this node like so, hold down F, and we then drag it right back out of the frame. So you're going to be able to organize your nodes a lot better. And if you do something stupid, which I'm prone to do, uh, it is also very obvious about it with this new error handling, which I actually really do appreciate. Now, speaking of geometry nodes, one of those things you're going to find a lot of times, if you're working with geometry nodes, you may not necessarily get out what you want, uh, the, the meshes that you're generating, if you want to go ahead and export them. For example, here, I've got these cupcakes. Uh, they're from a demo scene like so. So if I take these cupcakes right here, this is generated using geometry nodes. So I got, oh, control over here. I could create, you know, a different base or whatever. 
like so. But if I want to go ahead and export these out to another engine, sometimes the, the visual geometry doesn't actually match the export geometry you want to bring out. Well, there is a new option here. So I could pick an object. So let's go ahead and uh, pick the parent of it. So this is confusing because I have my outliner closed off. So I'm going to get here. We'll select that guy. So we'll pick this node right here. So we'll grab this cupcake over here. And what you can now do is go to uh, object. Oh, where are you? Okay, object. Uh, and we can go to apply like so. And now there's a new option here, a visual geometry to mesh or visual geometry to objects. So what I can do is basically say this and have it, boom, turn it into a variety of objects right there. Or I believe I can do it the other way and then go here, apply. Where did you go? Apply. I literally just clicked you. Apply. Okay, over here. And then visual geometry to mesh and have it generate a single mesh, I believe. So if you've got these things and you want to export them out and for some reason your geometry nodes isn't working or you create a geometry node that has like a network of nodes that's just spitting out results and you want to just basically turn it into visual objects, you can now do it using this new apply menu. Really cool stuff there. Now there's a ton more in this actual release. Come back here. There are the full release, release notes here. There's some improvements to grease pencil and sculpting. Uh, we've got a bunch of additions to the compositor as well. Uh, it's got a lot more parity uh, with other areas. So it's added a bunch of nodes to make it identical in workflow to what the shading and geometry nodes are being add vector, rotate, mix, uh, and mix curve. You also have these new nodes here for uh, a new image coordinate node for various types of pixel coordinates. Um, and uh, texture nodes already available in the geometry shader nodes are also now supported. So you got more parity across the various different things. You also have a new relative to pixel node that was added to convert values. Uh, but the other thing to be aware of here is in this area, this is important for game developers. We've got a ton of uh, improvements to the most popular supports out there. So right now we are losing Kalata, but what we are gaining is new features for GLTF, new features for USD, and a number of new features for FBX. Uh, which sadly enough is still pretty much the standard for talking in the world of, um, you know, game assets between engines. So a uh, number of improvements right there, which is cool to see. There is a bunch more in this. I'll get into more depth when it's the full Blender 4.5 release. I'll just take a look at the 4.5 alpha at some point in the near future. But 4.5, um, sorry, the 5.0 alpha in the near future. But a 4.5, a ton to love here. Uh, again, the big one has got to be that Vulcan is here. I believe that's under EV, where they, EV, EV and Viewport. Uh, where they, yeah, so Vulcan is now here. Also, by the way, new uh, Shadow Terminator, and you see really cool results as a result of it. But there is a bunch in Blender 4.5. But Vulcan, probably the creme de la creme. But as you saw, in terms of the hands-on portion of this video, there are a ton of little quality of life things that'll just make Blender that much more pleasant to work with. So let me know what you think of Blender 4.5 beta, uh, and are you going to use Vulcan? Have you used Vulcan, and how have you found it? Also, have you crashed a lot? Let me know. Comments down below. I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.